Hello, beloved, and welcome to this evening message where uh, we are going to take a look at something that's happening around the world. Everywhere, it seems as if it's escalating. I don't know if you've noticed it, but there's such a lot of lying going on lately. I mean, it seems as if lying has become the norm and uh, telling the truth is kind of more of an ex the, the exception. So I would like to spend a few moments for us to just look at the idea of lying from a biblical perspective, obviously, to see what Scripture says about it. We know that in the last days there will be deception. Now, deception is nothing other than lies being told. No? Half-truths being uh, told to people or just plain out lying. And, and we're going to see that escalate in the last days. Jesus said, don't be deceived. Many will come and say that, you know, he is the Christ or things like that. There's going to be a lot of things that's going to be said and it's going to be all lies. All right, so I would like us to just spend a few moments looking at lying, you know, as um, from a biblical perspective. Before we do that, though, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for your love and kindness towards us. And thank you, Father, for the privilege of digging into your word and to see what your word has to say to us and so that we can learn. And especially in the time that we're living in, and as we see the return of Christ get closer and closer, Father, we, we are experiencing so much lying going on. And I want to pray, Father, will you please teach us from your word and enable me as your servant to teach your people, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Now, I watched the movie... Uh, the other day, it was about a 16-year-old boy. He accidentally killed his girlfriend. But uh, his father covered up some of the evidence and all kinds of things happened. A lot of lying was taking place. Eventually, this young boy, 16 years old, was sentenced to five years in prison. He would have just got a, a suspended sen sentence, most probably. But he got a sentence of five years in jail and his dad one year. Why? Because of a bunch of lies. It was so unfortunate. But I, I remember as I watched this movie. There was a few times where the boy would say. What should I do? You know kind of this desperate outcry of this young boy. Teenager basically now. What should I do? And I, I remember as I'm, I'm watching this movie. And my response would be tell the truth. Just tell the truth. You see. Jesus said that the truth shall set us free. And, and obviously God's word is the truth. So we, we are looking at God's word as the ultimate truth. But just speaking the truth, it will set us free. Because you never ever have to think about the truth. Now it's, it's interesting. When you tell the truth or if something happened and you just say it as it is, you never ever have to go back and say, so how did I describe this situation you know if you've told a lie because then you must remember but if you just tell the truth the truth is the truth so you just tell the truth but beloved in a world filled with lies i mean what should our attitude be towards lying what does the scripture says about lying because that's kind of important especially in the time that we're living in as we see the return of christ come closer and closer I believe we're going to see even more lying than what we are seeing and experiencing now. Now, the first thing that I believe we need to understand what Scripture says, all lying is forbidden. All lying. We are forbidden to tell lies. We should be people of the truth. We should tell the truth all the time. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 says, Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds. You see, before we were saved, we would be telling lies nah? to get out of trouble or just tell lies to make things look bigger and grander and fancier than what it, supposed, or what it actually was. That's what we did when we were still unsaved. That's why the Apostle Paul says to the Colossians, do not lie to one another. Why don't we lie to one another? Why do we tell the truth to one another? Because we have put off the old man with his deeds. And, and this idea of putting it off is like taking off a jacket. Nah? So stop lying. 
Start telling the truth to one another. That's basically what it boils down to. And we as Christians, specifically, we should speak the truth in love all the time. Doesn't matter what. And even these little white lies, you know, that we, we sometimes say, ah, that's okay. No, no, not even a white lie. Not even the smallest of lies are acceptable in God's sight. All right, it's forbidden to tell lies. And, and, and why? I believe it's because Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, listen to this. It says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord. That's a serious word. It's an abomination to the Lord. But those who deal truthfully are his delight. So what do we want to do? Do we want to do something that's an abomination to the Lord? Or do we do something or want to do something that is a delight to the Lord? Obviously, as God's people, we want to do things that will make God happy. Not as if we can make him happy through our, our actions, but you understand what I'm saying is it's just an attitude that we need to have is we want to to please God we want to do what he wants us to do and Proverbs 12 verse 22 tells us that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord that's it it's an abomination God doesn't want us to lie so beloved what should we do we should speak the truth in love always you see the problem is with with lying when we do lie it becomes a hindrance to our prayer. Just listen to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 2. It says, Your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. Right? So our iniquities separated from God, us from God. The sins that we used to do um, ha- have hidden his face from us. Okay? He will not hear us. That's basically when you are unsaved. But it continues in verse 3, he says, For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, and your tongue has murdered, of, of muttered, sorry, perversity. This is what we used to be before we got saved, beloved. Now that we are saved, we speak the truth in love. We don't want to associate with lies. We don't want anything to do with lies, because if you tell lies if lies continuously come over your lips or if you tell lies it means that God will not hear you God will not hear us if we lie God doesn't want us to lie all right so it's just heartbreaking because lying is definitely a hindrance to our prayer and God doesn't listen to our prayer when we lie so we should stop lying right we shouldn't be lying that's bottom line and, and especially, it's interesting how, how tall, um, not a tall order, but how important it is for those who rule not to lie. Listen to Proverbs 17, verse 7. It says, excellent speech is not becoming to a fool. So you wouldn't expect excellent speech out of the mouth of a fool, will you? Then Proverbs continue. It says, much less lying lips to a prince. So to somebody that is a ruler or somebody that's a, a leader, somebody that's in a high position, you don't expect lies to come out of their lips. Beloved, and that's why I believe, for example, that politicians who lie, are, they, they're not leaders. They're definitely not leaders because leaders, true leaders, they don't lie to their people. They don't lie to the people that, that they um, represent and so on. And that's why you cannot trust anybody that lies. Because once somebody lies, that means that they will have no problem to deceive you. All right, so as much as you do not expect excellent speech coming out of the mouth of a fool, we don't expect lying to come out of the mouth of a ruler or a leader. So we need to be very open-minded in a sense or very careful. We need to be watchful. Listen to the leaders. doesn't matter who the leaders are. And if there are leaders that lie, I think they need to be confronted. They need to com- be confronted with the truth because leaders should not lie. It is expected of leaders to speak the truth. And I believe that that's important. That's something that we need to, to, to take to heart. But you know what? 
there, there seems to be people who are kind of addicted to lies. Have, have you noticed that? False prophets, for example, definitely, they, they, they are addicted to lies because they are prophesying falsely anyway. They are, they, they are twisting God's truth. And, and when they do that, obviously, they are filled with lies. It's as if they are addicted to lies. The same thing with false witnesses, those who, who will not tell the truth when they are testifying um, for or against somebody else. Their hearts are just so full of lies that th it seems as if they're addicted. Somebody that's addicted can't help themselves now because the addiction actually controls them. And I believe somebody that tells lies and is, is kind of addicted to lies, they can't help themselves anymore. They are so controlled by these lies. That that's all they can do is to tell lies. But I believe that hypocrites are also addicted to lies. Because they're living a lie. That's why they're called a hypocrite now. Now, another thing that we, need to, well, that we see from Scripture and notice from Scripture is that wicked people love to lie. They actually delight in their lies. They seek to tell lies. They, they speak it and they love to listen to lies. All characteristics of wicked people, people who are unsaved. This should not be part of our lives. This, we, we should not look like this. We, we shouldn't be people that are, how can I say, that are being controlled by lies. And then we know, beloved, that Satan is the father of lies. The devil is the father of lies. And it's interesting how John chapter 8, um, verse 30, 44 describes the devil now it says uh, you belong to your father the devil this is jesus speaking to the pharisees and he says to them you belong to your father the devil and you want to do the desires of your father all right so they belong to the devil and they want to do the desires of the devil and then jesus continues and says it says he was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand for the truth because there is no truth in him when he speaks a lie he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. That's the devil. He's the father of lies. When he speaks lies, it comes from his own resources. It's something that is in him. It just comes out of him because that's who Satan is. He is the father of lies. And it's, it's heartbreaking that Jesus would speak to religious leaders and say to them that they belong to the devil. And they call the devil their father. That they belong to their father, the devil. Nah? And, and how does he know? Because they are doing the desires of their father, the devil. Right? So the Pharisees, what were they trying to do with Jesus? All the time they wanted to catch him somehow so that they can destroy him. They wanted to kill Jesus. So they were just like their father, the devil. And... Jesus says the devil was a murderer from the beginning, and so are the Pharisees. They want to destroy and kill Christ. Right? They don't stand for the truth. Just like the devil doesn't stand for the truth. The Pharisees didn't stand for the truth, because if they did stand for the truth, they wouldn't have tried to kill Christ. They would have embraced him as the Jewish Messiah. All right. But the text tells us very clearly that there is no truth in the devil. Beloved, so... Don't even think that you're going to get the truth from the, from the devil and from his followers. Yes, they are going to give you some truth, but they're going to twist the truth. And they're going to abuse the truth. And they're going to add or they're going to take away from the truth. Because Satan, when he speaks, he speaks lies. He speaks from his own resources. It just comes out of him because that's who he is. He's a liar. And the father of lies. You know, so th that's the reality of what we see in Scripture. But one thing about a lie that you and I can be sure of, it's going to come out some other time. I mean, you cannot tell a lie and tell a lie and continue to tell a lie and think it's not going to come into the open at some other time. Uh, Proverbs chapter 12 verse 19 tells us that the truthful lip... Uh, shall be established forever because the, tr the truth lasts forever nah? so the truthful lip shall be established forever and then it says but a lying tongue is but for a moment now, obviously the the 
the writer of Proverbs, Solomon, is saying that um, a lying tongue is just for a moment because it only lasts for this world. It's not going to go into ever uh, eternity. There will be no lies in, in heaven. There will be no lies when we are in the presence of God. That's for sure. But a lying tongue only lasts for a moment. And why does it only last for a moment? Because it will come into the open. Even if it comes in the open when that person is um, judged by God, still it's going to come into the open. It's not worth lying. Lies comes out eventually. Lies definitely comes out eventually. Now, talking about lying, I mean, many, many years ago when I was a little boy, and, and I can say many, many years ago because it's been quite a few years, I um, I was told that I I could tell stories and I could make up stories and if if there were stories to be told in the in the school then I would would be the one who made up these stories because I had this uh, this imagination you know and they said that I had a very good imagination. In fact, I didn't have a good imagination. All I had was I was a good liar. I would make up stories. I would. Uh, exaggerate on things and, and all it was that I, I was just a, a liar in instead of being confronted with the fact that I'm a liar uh, I was said no I had a good imagination it's not true and beloved when we talk to our children we need to help our children really really help our children from a very young age to differentiate between the truth and lies Yes, you can have a good imagination. Yes, you can have a, have a make up this and a make up that. But when it comes to, to telling the truth, uh, I mean, I remember I was told that I told my grandfather that um, we had a swimming pool in the back of your yard. Okay, just as big as my grandfather's swimming pool. He had a quite a big one. And then when they, my grandfather came to visit, he said, so where's the swimming pool? And I told my grandfather, no, we covered it up. That's not true. That was blatant lies okay it's not that i have an imagination at one stage i said that i think i said my brother killed a <clears throat> an elephant with a six inch nail it's not true that's not true at all i didn't have a good imagination i was a little liar and what needs to happen is we need to become new people in christ and we should stop our lying whether it's a little bit of exaggeration of things or just having this, this imaginary things. or um, We need to make sure that we teach our children not to lie. Because at the end of the day, I, I want you to listen to this. Um, the end of liars is not a good place. Obviously, we have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. But it doesn't give us the, the opportunity that we can now go around and lie. No. It doesn't give us uh, an open pass for us to go and sin. Okay. We need to make sure that we speak the truth in love all the time. Right. Now, it's interesting. In Proverbs, that we, we read the following. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 22. This is an amazing verse. It says, What is desired in a man is kindness. And a poor man is better than a liar. Isn't that amazing? It's better to be a poor man than to be a liar. And by the way, the future of liars is described in um, in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, where we read, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You see where liars will be going? It says, and all liars. There's no place for lies in heaven. There's no place for people who cannot stand for the truth and doesn't love the truth in God's presence. Now, there are quite a few examples in Scripture of liars. Ne? Uh, for example, obviously, the father of lies the devil we meet him already in genesis chapter 3 now where he lies to adam and eve but then we have um, in chapter 4 of genesis we have cain and what did he do he lied to god when when god came to him to find out where his brother was and he said i don't know 
What was he doing? He used lies to cover up his sin. What was his sin? He killed his brother. He murdered his brother. And he covered it up by a lie when God asked him where his brother was. Another example in scripture in, in Genesis chapter 18 is Sarah. You remember? Um, when she heard that she was going to be pregnant, she laughed. And when the angel spoke to her about it, she lied. And she said, I didn't laugh. You know, yeah, we know she was afraid. I mean, the scripture tells us in Genesis 18, 15 that she was afraid of this angel. But fear doesn't give us a, a, a blank check to lie. That's not how it works. And it's written down for us to, 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 to basically read it and to remember, don't lie about anything. And then you will remember in Genesis chapter 27 that Jacob lied to, to his father when he... Um, Pretended to be Esau. You remember that? Yeah, Jacob lied. Then Joseph's brothers, they also lied. You know, they, they lied to Joseph, uh, to Jacob about Joseph. Yeah, it's heartbreaking. It's interesting how, how Jacob lied to his father about being Esau. And then his own children lied to him about his son Joseph, which he loved. And then we, we read about David, who lied to um, Ahimelech in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verse 2, when he was afraid that Saul would find out where he was. Remember that? Hmm. Then obviously, the well-known one in the New Testament is Peter, that lied that he knew Jesus and he betrayed Christ. Now he, he denied that he knew Christ in, in Matthew chapter 26. And then the 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 one where Ananias and Sapphira both died because they lied to the Holy Spirit about this amount of money that they received when they sold their property. Sad, sad, sad. But they lied. They lied to the Holy Spirit. And then in Titus chapter 1, verse 12, we read about the Cretans. That one of their prophets says that the Cretans, or the Cretans, are always liars. What a way to be known if somebody says, yeah, these people are always liars. So the Cretans are, were known as being liars. And it's written down in Scripture for everybody to read. It's heartbreaking. But beloved, these examples are, are put in Scripture for us so that we will not follow in their footsteps, so that we will learn and not do the same thing. All right. So what should our attitude be towards, uh, towards lies? What, what, what should our attitude be? Because I think we, we should have a very precise attitude when it comes to lies. We should actually be proactive when it comes to lies. And I believe that the first thing that we need to, to do with regards to lies is to hate it. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 5 says that a righteous man hates lying. Hates it. That's a that's a hard word, eh? To hate something. Well, it's a good thing to hate lies or to hate lying. That's what Proverbs 13 tells us. We should hate it. That should be our attitude towards lies. We should hate lies with everything that is in us. But we should also, as far as we can, we should try to avoid lying. Or we should uh, try to avoid liars. In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 13, we read about this remnant of Israel that they uh, should do or shall do no unrighteousness and speak no lies. They will avoid speaking lies because they are the remnant of Israel. They, there are people who want to do what God wants them to do. So what they do is they avoid telling lies at all costs. They avoid being having interaction with liars they would rather expose lies and i think we should do the same we should expose lies whenever we see it not participate in it all right but then i believe that scripture also tells us that we should not respect those who tell lies we shouldn't strengthen them in their in their lies we should actually expose them how can we respect somebody that that continuously tells lies. Don't show them any respect. Love them with the love of Christ and give them the gospel and, and expose their lies and tell them that 
It's a it's an abomination to the Lord. Okay, but you cannot respect somebody that lies to you. You cannot trust somebody that lies to you. I believe, like, like David, we should reject those who walk around telling lies. I mean, Psalm 101 verse 7, the Psalm of David, he says, He who works the seat shall not dwell within my house. He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence. Harsh words from the king, eh? That's from David. Yeah. He says, He who tells lies shall not continue in my presence, which means that David didn't want to associate with people who tells lies. Right? That basically means that I believe we should also we should reject those who tell lies. We should expose the lies, obviously. Try to help the person to correct their wrong behavior. But we, we should not be associated with lies in any way. But then, Psalm 119, verse 29. This is the psalmist, and he, and he prays the following. He says, Remove from me the way of lying, and grant me your law graciously. Isn't that beautiful? It's so beautiful. Remove from me the way of lying. It's as if we, we should be praying to be preserved from lying. Please, Lord. Remove free me from the way of lying. Remove me or <clears throat> shelter me from lying in any way. Please, Lord. That should be our heart's prayer. Our heart's desire is, is not to be involved in lies. Not, not like what we're seeing as, uh, in, in the world today. Not as we will see as we get closer and closer to the return of Christ. More and more lying is going to take place. Beloved, we should be sheltered from it. We should, how can I say, distance ourselves from all the lies. And we should expose those lies. Bring, it to the, bring the truth in love, not, not lie. Don't be involved in it at all. I mean, we are children of truth. And we should not involve ourselves in lies. We should walk in truth, talk the truth. We should embrace the truth. Because ultimately the truth shall set us free. Why? Because God's word is the truth. And God's word tells us that should, we should not be involved in lies in any way. I'd like to close with a word in Revelation chapter 22, in verse 10 and 11. Listen, th listen closely. The, and this is now what has been revealed to John. Now, this is the angel that, that revealed all these visions and, and different things to John. This is what the angel says. He says to John, Do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Verse 11. This is Revelation 22, verse 10 and 11. Verse 11 says, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. So those who are unjust and those who are filthy and those who are liars will continue to do that. All right, that's what they're going to do. We should preach the gospel. We should share the good news of the gospel with them. And, and we pray that God will grant them grace and that they will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and be set free from the power and the bondage of sin and start telling the truth. That's what we desire. But the angel tells um, John that the unjust will continue to be unjust and those who are filthy will continue to be filthy. But listen to this. He says, and he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. Oh, beloved, this is so, so awesome. So beautiful in the sense we are a new people in Christ. We should put off lying. We should not be involved in lying. But rather what we should be doing is we should live righteous lives. We should live just lives. We should be holy and continue being more and more holy, more and more righteous, more and more doing the right thing. That's what we should be doing. And especially as we see the return of Christ, Jesus come closer and closer and closer, even more so. May we continue in righteousness. May we continue to be just. May we continue... Not to be indulged in lying, 
may the Lord enable us not to even tell white lies, but to live in the truth. Oh, may the Lord help us in that. Beloved, what does this mean? What, what am I saying to you? I believe that if we read Scripture and we see what Scripture has to say to us, specifically with regards to lying, that we should be distant from lying. That our lives should reflect holiness and um, uprightness and righteousness and not the other side of the coin. Because God has called us to be holy as He is holy. And may the Lord really enable us through the the work of the Holy Spirit in us, that we will be everything that He wants us to be. And beloved, that excludes lying. It excludes it. It does not include lying. May the Lord help us in that. Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can come to you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Father, that your word is so clear about lying, that it's an abomination that we should run far from it, that we shouldn't be close to it. Father, everything that Scripture teaches us about lying, I pray that we will make it our own. And I pray, Father, that we will live just lives, holy lives, lives that are pleasing to you. And forgive us where we have messed up, where we have used lies to try to get us out of trouble. And uh, when we face certain things, we tell lies out of fear for people. Father, I pray, please forgive us. And I pray at the end of the day, Father, saturate us in your truth, for your word is truth. So I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much for listening to this evening service. I hope that God's word just enables us to, to live the kind of lives that are pleasing to him. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you his peace. And let's go out and spread the truth, spread the gospel, um, expose the lies, and live as people who are God's people. God willing, until next time, bye-bye.